Hello, Mr. Squirrel. Would you like a catch? Hey, come back. I'm trying to... All right, fine. In this video, we're going to catch some feelings. Wait, no. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install the Mishimoto Compact Catch Cans. So when you open your engine bay, this is how it's going to look like. As you can see, we got catch can on either side of the crankcase, on the hot and cold side. The purpose of the catch can is going to increase the longevity of your engine, removing any gunk and debris that will possibly wear it down. So in this open unit, the dirty air and the gunk comes in through this hole and it's going to go through this brass filter. The brass filter is going to separate the gunk and make the air a little bit cleaner. Then the gunk is going to start dripping through this baffle which is the silver part and the catch can over here is going to capture it. And essentially this is how it works. First location I'll be mounting it right here in this fuse box. And the second location I'll be mounting it back here in this fuse box. What you're going to need is a pair of 90 degrees brackets to mount your catch cans too. And if you take a closer look, you can already see that one of them has been slightly bent. If I were to mount it here, it's already at an oblique angle. In order for me to mount it straight, I had to bend the metal to make it look like this. What you want to do to bend the metal is use this tongue and groove plier. All you do is put it between the two teeth and compress it. What you'll notice about the catch can is that it has two mounting points. But the bracket only comes with one. So what I'm going to do is drill another hole and make sure they're lined up evenly. We're going to start off by removing the mounting plate on the catch can. You take a 2.5mm Allen key and right up there. So now we can take this off. Over here. Try to line this up. See that dot? Perfect. What you want to do is take your hammer and take a small nail. I don't have a pilot hole so I'm just going to make shift one right here. Ow! You take this off. And you can see there's a dent mark right here. Use some WD-40. I'm just gonna lubricate the surface here. Use a 360 metal lock side drill bit to cut through steel. Just slowly drill into it. Nothing crazy. And what you can see, it's already starting to split open. You wanna firmly press down on the drill with your hand and just take your time with it. This isn't, we're drilling through metal, not wood. Every now and then you wanna wipe off and See how you're doing. Not bad, eh? Not bad at all. As you can see, I just pierced right through. Now I'm going to continue drilling to have the hole the same size. And there you have it. Perfect secondary hole, matched up evenly. Alright, so now both of these guys have been drilled. What I did next is sand it down with some 320 grit sandpaper. And after that, I'm going to paint it with some high temperature paint. Check how nice these came out. It took five minutes to dry with a satin black finish and no primer required. So you take a 10 millimeter, remove that, and here's our bent bracket that we're gonna put in. First, you wanna hand thread this. Because there's gonna be a lot of vibration, I decided to use lock nuts and 8.30 second screws. Just like that. And we're gonna put that through there. And we're gonna take the lock nut, screw it. Ah. Take the lock nut. Just go back and forth until there's no play. Now, if we take a look at the structure, that's solid. That's called engineering, folks. All we're gonna need is one input and one output. So I'm gonna block this one using a simple brass plug. Anytime you're threading something that involves pneumatics or plumbing, you need to use something called Teflon tape. This is basically a paper gasket, so nothing escapes when you're combining two points. You want to do maybe about two to three rolls. After that, we just screw it right in. And then to tighten it a little bit more, just take a wrench. If this is not tightened properly, you will get a boost leak. Adds a bit of bling to your catch can, doesn't it? Next, you want to add in a half inch connector. I also went ahead and put some Teflon tape. You can grab a wrench. There you go. All right, so this is plugged. That's our output to the intake manifold. Our input's going to be a little different. Our input is from our PCV, and if you haven't changed already, you should do so. So the PCV fitting, as you can see, this is a half inch that comes with the catch can. And this is our 3 8 connector. What you want to do is get a 3 8 barb fitting that's brass as well. We're going to Teflon it and install it right there. Alright, so with the Teflon tape on, we're just going to screw this here. Get your wrench and turn it. Some kind of construction back going on back there. <laughs> Anyways, and now this is complete, time to install this. So lastly on the bottom of a can, there's a drain plug. We're not going to use it because you can easily twist this off. But what we're going to do is put Teflon tape on it just to make sure it's secured and tight. 
All right, so we're gonna slowly and carefully slide this under. Make sure the screw doesn't fall down here or else you're screwed. So depending where I want the nozzles to be pointed to, I can move it around. And in my case, I want them to be the extreme right. I highly advise to use thread locker for these two screws because there's gonna be a massive amount of vibrations going through. Check that out, right beside my blow-off valve. Tell me that doesn't look like stock. Here's the mounting plate on the other side and the catch can. And as you can see, they're both half inch connectors. So we start off by removing this 10 millimeter bolt here. And then we take our mounting plate, we're gonna hand thread this on and then bolt this down. Turbo. So we're gonna put this to the extreme right, just like the other side. There you go. Get your needle nose plier, do that, and then just pull it out. And this is gonna come off. Okay, two. And for the other side, you wanna remove here and here. Slide it off here, and slide it off there. Now we're gonna use a 3 8 pipe and connect our PCV to our barb fitting. Put this here, right in there, just like that. Why is there a wasp here? Now you take a half inch tube. Put that right there. Good. Over here. And that's it. This is our cold side system. Completely done, clamped down. Now we're gonna do the input side. So all you do is take your half inch. One goes like this. And the other goes in like that. Okay. And that's two. All right, so this is the final piping. So first, we're gonna put this, and then we're gonna put this in here. You gotta use your ratchet here. Just gotta use a look at it, okay, that's tight, that's tight. As an option, you can wrap your cash can in gold reflective heat tape, especially above the turbo manifold area. So this is gonna be our final setup. And as you can see, we have a cash can on either side of the crank, so on the hot side and the cold side. The hot side goes directly to your intake, and your crankcase, and the cold side goes to your PCV and your intake manifold. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you got any questions, leave a comment below. Make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.